What's going on everybody? Welcome to my YouTube channel and in today's video, I'm going to show you how I pass my CompTIA Security Plus certification. I'm basically going to walk you through the journey of where I started, what I did to study, what type of exams, what type of practice exams that I took, the different methods of how I studied, what I looked at, pretty much I'm gonna show you how I prepared for my certification. Last year, I decided that I wanted to have a career change. I wanted to basically make more money and venture into the cybersecurity world. In today's market, it is very competitive and you can't just have a resume that doesn't have any like certifications or anything that, you know, that's just the bare minimum, right? You gotta add substance to your resume. So. I knew if I was going to go into cybersecurity, I needed to have a certification. I'm not going to lie, I've been five years removed from college and it took me a while to learn how to balance studying as well as having a full-time job. It is not easy and if you're not consistent and if you're not you know, putting the effort into studying every single day, you can fall off. And that's what happened to me. By the time you see this video, the 601 exam would have passed. And the only exam right now that you can take is the 701 security plus certification. So the 601, I think was established uh, three or four years ago. And just within the last few months, a new exam has been implemented. It involves things that are current within 2024. So uh, the exam is updated and the 601 is basically no more. So last year when I decided to study and start uh, putting in the effort into getting a cybersecurity certification, I basically, I started reading this book here. I started reading the CompTIA Security Plus 601 Certification Guide by uh, Eon Neal. And this was a book that I got off of Amazon. I think it was like, uh, I wanna say 20 or 30 some dollars. I can't remember, cause it was a while ago. And it was very intimidating. This is a full thick textbook. Um, I think it has maybe almost 400 pages in here. If you are a reader, I would recommend, you know, this, this type of book. Um, it's very, very, very detailed. It has a lot of practice questions and everything in here, but I got unmotivated. I got unmotivated to read this consistently because I am a visual learner as well as a uh, video learner. So if I watch videos and apply that knowledge to something, that's how I can soak in the knowledge. Reading a textbook is just something that I just prefer not to do. So when I started reading this book, um, I fell off a lot of times. Like I would read, you know, 10 pages a day, for a good like maybe two or three weeks and then I would just fall off and not want to read it anymore. So I kept putting it off. I kept putting it off and I eventually realized that the 601 exam was coming to an end and the 701 exam was being implemented. So I thought to myself, okay, you know, if I still have these same habits now and try to cram in learning the 601 exam, if I fail it, then I may not have enough time to take it again since it's being removed uh, on July 31st. That's the expiration date for the 601 exam was July 31st. So if you're if you're trying to study for the 601 exam and it's past July 31st, uh, the only thing that you will be able to take is a 701. So keep that in mind. This was back in 2023 when I you know decided that I wanted to start learning cybersecurity, and like I said, it it just didn't work. So. Um, at the top of 2024, I decided, okay, I'm going to really put in the effort to study um, consistently and find new methods and ways to really be consistent with studying the material as well as, you know, being consistent. So number one thing that I started doing was looking at the Professor Messer uh, videos that are on YouTube. Professor Messer definitely is a good resource to learn the CompTIA Security Plus material. Um, he goes through all of the objectives. He has, I wanna say, uh, I wanna say over like 100 videos that goes through every single objective from top to bottom. He gives good explanations. And that's something that I just started to look, uh, that I started to watch on a daily basis. He also has uh, live sessions 
So, you know, every month he'll do a live study session for groups that for people that want to, you know, engage and, you know, go through different questions and things of that nature. Uh, I definitely recommend looking into Professor Messer. He also sells practice exams. He also sells uh, the course notes as well as exam hacks. So if you buy the whole bundle, I really think it's worth it. But you can also buy them separate. Not only does he, uh, you know, has resources for the Security Plus, but he also has resources for the Network Plus, A Plus, those certifications as well. The next resource I use that I think is the secret sauce that helped me retain the information is the Jason Dion's Udemy course. Uh, this course is sold on Udemy.com. I think it was like twelve dollars at the time for me to purchase and. The reason why I say that that was a good resource and like the secret sauce to help me retain the information is because everything that's explained uh, within that course is relevant to what is to that's what's going on today. So some of the objectives, they tie into current examples that really help you understand why certain things are the way they are. And um, it's not just one instructor. I want to say it's up to three and they do a real good job at breaking down the information and applying it to what's going on currently in the cybersecurity world today. So I definitely recommend researching Udemy and take Jason Dion's uh, training courses. There's also a practice exam at the end as well. It's a good, it's 90 questions, it's time. And I definitely will say take those, you know, more than once so you can, you know, learn the information. So that's number two. Number three, the thing that I uh, also did was I looked up a lot of videos on YouTube and I just practice uh, questions. So there are a lot of resources on YouTube that just have different instructors going through different practice exam questions. So you can definitely, you know, just type in, you know, CompTIA 701 uh, practice exams and you'll have a lot of people just going through different questions and some are better than others. Some, you have some videos that just, you know, shows the question and then they'll give you the answer and then you have other videos that they'll have the question you'll get if you get it right you know they tell you the right answer and then if you get it wrong they have an explanation on why you got it wrong and they literally go through every choice and explain why this shouldn't be the answer and why the correct answer is the answer so i definitely say like through repetition go through youtube find practice exam videos and just you know have it planned the fourth thing that i think is the most important is doing the practice exam. Practice exams, taking those prior to your real exam is very, very important. I will say that you need to take at least 20 practice exams, not cram them, but stretch them out throughout, you know, your course of uh, studying. So, you know, if you're trying to get this within, let's just say a month, once you're done studying all of the objectives, you have to know the objectives. The objectives are going to be on the exam. Don't study anything outside of the objectives. Just stick to that. And once you get done studying the objectives and you have a good knowledge of, you know, those objectives, go take the practice exams. Those are very important. And when I say that, it is because put yourself in an environment that's just like on when you take the real exam. Most of the questions that I practice on were similar to what was going to be on the real exam you know, take as many of those as you can. So make sure you find exams that are, you know, 90 questions, make sure you time yourself and do as many of those as you can. Now, what I say the night before the test is make sure that you don't cram. That's something that I made a mistake on when I took the exam the first time. I failed the exam the first time and that I feel like it's because I was studying too much, if that makes sense. I was studying all the way up to taking the exam. So I studied all night. I studied in the morning and, you know, I literally studied until it was time to take the test. I don't recommend that. What I do recommend is that you take as many exams as you can the night before, but don't stay up all night trying to study and get up in the morning and study again. The only thing that you should be studying in the morning is just like key concepts, port numbers, things of that nature. And maybe practice a um, performance based question, maybe one tops just, you know, so you can familiarize yourself with doing those on the on the actual exam. On the day of the exam, you know, don't stress, eat you a light breakfast, make sure, you know, your mind is clear. Be confident. Go in knowing that you put in the work to study. 
You put in the work to, to know the material and you'll do just fine. Now, some of the things that I remember when I took the actual exam is that, you know, you can get up to 90 questions, but I didn't get that. The first exam I took, I think I had 77. The second exam that I took, I had 74. So you're not always going to get 90 questions. The second thing I remember about taking the exam the second time is that one of the performance based questions that I got on the first exam that I took a few months back, I got the same exact performance based question on the second exam. So I kind of remember like, OK, this is what I needed to answer when I went back to the practice. Uh, when I went back to the performance based questions, it really saved my butt. So remember that, you know, you know, if you're in a situation where, you know, you failed the first time, which. Look, I have faith in you. You're not going to fail. You're going to pass it the first time. You're not going to be like me. But if you're in a situation to where, you know, you failed the first time and you took it and you're taking it the second time, just know that, you know, going in the second round, you already know what to expect. You may get some of the same questions. So just keep that in mind. And a few things that I would recommend if you have a full time job and you're trying to balance that with studying for the cybersecurity certification is that the key thing is to find time. What I did with when I was studying is that I would find some downtime even when I was working to study. So during lunch, I would go study, find a quiet place, go through a few practice exams, a few a few study questions or watch some videos. I would take that time to study. And even if I had some downtime while I was working, you know, if I wasn't really busy and I wasn't really doing anything, I would take the time to do the same thing. Watch videos, go through practice questions just so I can keep those gears turning and, you know, I won't fall off with consistency. Sometimes you might have to just sacrifice, right? You might have to sacrifice some time that you're putting in somewhere else and putting into studying. Now, I don't, you know, I'm not saying that you have to take time away for your kids and stuff like that. I don't have kids, so I, I'm not going to talk about that. I do go to the gym a lot. So, the time that I would take going to the gym after work, I would substitute that with studying. So instead of going to the gym right after work, I would go home, put in the extra hours to study. And that's how, you know, I put in the extra effort to learn the material. It wasn't permanent. It was just temporary. So just know that, you know, this is not a thing that, you know, is going to last forever. So sometimes you might have to just sacrifice, if, you know, one or two months or a few weeks just so you can get that uh, get this off your plate. So, yeah, that's one of the, the things that I recommend if you have a full time job and you're trying to balance this as well. And, yeah, man, all I all I want to say is that, you know, getting this certification definitely separates you from, you know, a lot of people. And, you know, companies will start reaching out to you more just due to the fact that you have this cybersecurity certification. This particular certification, from my experience and what from I've been told, is that this is what gets you in the door to making that six figures. This certification is what allows you to enter into the cybersecurity world and start building a foundation of cybersecurity. So, you know, if you don't have any experience at all, definitely start with the Security Plus CompTIA certification. Sometimes people will say, you know, start with the Network Plus because that's learning about like port numbers and firewalls and things like that. But you don't have to do that. CompTIA does recommend that you take the Network Plus before the Security Plus, but I went straight into the Security Plus. I got it, I passed the exam, and now I'm Security Plus certified. I was definitely upset that I didn't pass the first time. You know, I failed. I got up, dust myself back off, and I went back into studying and I put focus on the things that I needed to fix. So, you know, some of the the, the objectives that, you know, I got an understanding of the first time, I didn't really put a lot of effort into that. And I put effort into, you know, the things that I, you know, that I was having trouble memorizing or key concepts that I couldn't really understand and implement. Those were the things that I put more effort into. Just know that you can't give up. If this is something that you really want to do, you really have to put in the work. You really have to put in the work to study. You can't slack off. You need to be consistent in studying. And if you do that, you'll definitely be Security Plus certified. Let me talk to the people that failed the exam the first time. You're not alone because I'm one of them. And the one key thing about failing the exam is that when you go take it the second time, you know what to expect. You know what is kind of going to be on the exam and you have a good feeling of you know what, what's going to be on there so that's a plus and i also will say you know i'm not going to say this 
it's for everybody. But when I took the exam the second time, there were a few questions that were on the first exam that I got again, especially the performance based question. I literally got the same question. Maybe I just got lucky, but that's something that I do remember when I took the exam the second time. Also, I got less questions. So you can get up to 90 questions for the exam. The first exam, I got 77. Second time I took it, I got 74. You know, you're not, you're not gonna always get the same amount of questions, you know, when you take the exam. So that's another, that's another tip bit. But look, you got this, you put in the effort, go in there confident knowing that you're gonna pass the exam. And one last thing that I wanna leave you with is I definitely recommend taking the exam in person just due to the fact that when you're at home, there may be a little bit more of distractions and things of that nature, things that you maybe don't have to stress about when you go to a testing facility. And that's what I did the second time. The first time I took the exam at home, I did have a few noise, like things in the background that I was worrying about during the exam. So I'm thinking, okay, hey, if this instructor hear this, like, you know, are they gonna, you know, cancel my exam? So those were some things that kind of distract me a little bit when I took the exam from home. The second time I took it, I went to a testing facility, it was right down the street, and you know, I didn't have to worry about the extra things that was going on. It was literally me at my desk in front of the computer and that's it. So I had my full attention on the exam, didn't have to worry about any distractions. So I definitely recommend taking the exam in, in person if you can. If you have to take it, you know, from home and, you know, there's not a testing facility in your area, then you got to do what you got to do. I hope this helps. I hope that if you're watching this video, you take the uh, things that I've said in this video and you apply them to your study habits. And look, we're all here for the same thing. We're all here to be Security Plus certified, make well over six figures, and be successful in cybersecurity. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Share this with somebody. They're trying to take the CompTIA exam and uh, good luck to everybody. And look, comment below. Come back to this video after you've taken the exam. Comment below and let me know that you passed. All right. Peace.